Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is the 6th of February, 2021. Coming up in the Krusty Connect podcast, more so-called polls, contract secrets, vaccine insecurity, COVID camps and hotels, and other bullshit brought to you by the Canadian government. All that and more. Stick around. Listener discretion is advised. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This is the Krusty Kamek Podcast. A Canadian veteran's point of view on politics, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, another debacle by the Canadian government. Yes, the procurement minister, Miss Anita Arnand, you know, a qualified lawyer, educated extraordinaire aficionado, more or less hush, hush, hush on the vaccine issue in this country. Yes, we've had a lot of problems with the so-called vaccines. Now, I'll be blunt with this uh, this podcast with you is all. I'm not going to sit and dwell into the statistics and the half uh, scientific data that was constantly being put down our throats on a regular basis. We have vaccines. We don't have vaccines. We have facilities to make them. We don't have facilities to make them. We have contracts, contracts, contracts. Shush, 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 hush, hush, hush. All that good stuff. All in the name of safety. Now, you've heard me dwell about safety before because we have all these government officials sitting around talking about censoring our media, censoring what we say and what we do. And please, let's not talk about the contract issues with Moderna, Pfizer, or Novavax, or whatever other fucking company and conglomerate they want to come up with. All in the name of telling the masses that everything's going to be just fine. Well, no, it's not. Now, we know for the facts now, too, there have been a few people that have had vaccines in the States and in Britain who have had issues health-wise, okay? A vaccine that has not been tested properly, a vaccine that has not been vented properly, and yet there are a lot of people out there that rely on these vaccines, and for what? Hmm? Now, I'm not saying, I'm not denying the whole uh, beer bug COVID issue is fake. No, it's not. Okay, it's yeah, it's a real respiratory infection that's hurt and killed a lot of people. But why do a lot of these other G7 countries have access to these vaccines, have record sales, record distribution, and yet Canada seems what, 35th on the scale of everything that, of everyone that has received said vaccines? What's the issue, ladies and gentlemen? What is the issue? Please tell me. Let me know, crustybcanuck67 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Gab, and Telegram, and the new uh, social platform called Signal. I suggest you check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Reach me there if you want. And also, please contact me at crustycanuck.ca. That's my webpage. I've updated it recently. So if you want to leave a comment or two there, you can. You want to donate, you can do that as well. Links to my shop, links to my swagger, and just links to me and my bio. So if you want to know more about me, please check out crustycanuck.ca today. Anyhow, carrying on again with more contract secrets, more slap and tickles from our government. Well, I, I, I really don't know. Really, when you look at all the news footage that's, that's going on, and everything that's happening with the so-called procurement, you know, it, it's a fucking shit show. You know, it, it's funny how our procurement boards constantly sit around these round tables, have these discussions, and can't get anything done. Now, the amount of money that has been spent in the past year on this debacle it is fucking mind-boggling. We're, we're, we're looking in the billions, okay? Our federal government alone has spent billions on helping others, and yet they can't procure enough vaccines for Canadians that need them. No, they can't, they can't procure. They can't sit together and work together to find a, an actual fucking solution to this problem, right? And of course, Anita Arnand, uh, Miss Procurement Minister herself, more or less telling people to hush up and hush and, you know, keep quiet about this because we don't want to upset any kind of contract. Well, what kind of contract did you fucking sign in the name of Canada that's going to jeopardize any kind of distribution? Really? Our American friends get the vaccines. Our British friends get the vaccines. Australia, New Zealand, you know, Italy, for crying out loud, has them. And I'm not disenfranchising Italy because they were the hardest hit last year when it came to this issue, regardless of how their socialized medicine scheme works or not. 
They have the ability to vaccinate their people. Why? What's what's wrong with Canada? Okay, again, another blunder. Okay, now regardless of what side you sit on in the fence, whether it's a liberal red or the conservative blue or NDP orange or greeny green or blue for this or pink for that or gold for this or gold for that. Okay, we have we have a minority government in charge that is supposed to do things like you know govern. Hey, what a novel fucking idea. Right? And yet they fail to do it. So I don't care how many lawyers or how many so-called PhD holders out there who are calling the shots in this issue. They're not doing it right. Something's not right in this deal. I'll leave links in the description, what have you, too, in regards to uh, uh, my little predicament here. And I want you, my listeners and viewers alike, to decide, to think for yourselves here. What is the issue? And now they're having such an issue with contracts uh, in regards to manufacturing or where they're going to manufacture. Uh, I know uh, the procurement board has asked Pfizer and Moderna and all these other manufacturers that they can manufacture in Canada, and now they can't. And now they're going to create another lab in Montreal, Novavax, to create the vaccine here. But that's not going to be ready until at least, what, the summer, maybe the fall? No. Just at the time when they predicted doing another election? Hmm. Interesting. Which also brings me to the next point, too. There's a lot of these so-called polls going around in regards to who's going to be locked up and who gets fined and, and is it, are the police doing a good job and all this crap. And uh, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, and my listeners and, and everywhere else around the world, who, and especially my Ontario listeners out there, who has ever seen a poll, honestly, whether it be online or through the mail, or through word of mouth or via your cell phone, has anybody ever seen a poll in regards to what you think about locking people up in the name of this pandemic or anything related to that? Please let me know. CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the Gab application, and also on Telegram. Please let me know or leave a comment here on YouTube and Podbean. Let me know exactly what's going down. Because <clears throat> I, I have yet, in my years out here in Alberta, I have yet to see any kind of quote-unquote poll brought to us by any government. Uh, I think I saw something by the municipal government there a couple of years ago in regards to garbage pickup. That's about it. I haven't seen anything on the federal level or provincial level in regards to how we treat people with, uh, with the COVID or people without the COVID. I've never seen you poll how police officers conduct their business in regards to arresting people off ice rinks or off the street, you know, or quarantining or condemning somebody for a period of days at their expense at some lush, lavish hotel where they get fed prison food and being told when to shit and when to wipe. That simple, folks. So we can honestly say that everybody from the procurement board to the health boards to all these boards, to boards, 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 work, 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 cannot make a solid fucking decision in regards to our personal safety, okay? Now, there was a thing I saw on CTV this morning in regards to people passing the virus around. And I'll leave a link in the description too. Some doctor was saying that people between the ages of 20 and 49 are responsible for passing this virus around. Really? So that's the conclusion they come up to. So here we have an infection that is, is hurting people, especially people that are in their well in their 70s and early 80s. And now they're blaming it on 20 to 49-year-olds. Okay, so it's all our fault, is it? <laughs> wow. Can you say wingnut? I don't know. Now, I'm not questioning any kind of medical professional's uh, uh, ingenuity, skill, or craftsmanship, or professionalism, but I'm getting really, really sick and tired of seeing all these so-called medical know-it-alls who have never practiced medicine, or haven't practiced medicine the better part of 10 years, telling us again how we have to lock ourselves up, stay home, do this, do that, to follow the fucking narrative of so-called safety. Oh my goodness, yes, you better stay home and lock yourself up. I'm, I'm not seeing it. And again, these are people that promote these polls as well, too. Right? We, we, we see issues in Toronto with people being locked up in the Radisons. We see people in Calgary being locked up in, in said hotels after they get off an aircraft. Okay? There's footage up there of a mother who was waiting for her son to come home from some missionary trip. 
I believe her boy was about 20 years old, basically taken by hired security, thrown into a van and taken to a hotel without having the right to contact his loved ones, people that were waiting for him, and he was just taken away. What's that tell you? Now, I don't care what kind of infection or what kind of disease is going around. That kind of totalitarian bullshit should not ever fucking happen again. They had that problem back in Nazi Germany during World War II. And other communist states did the same thing too. A lot of totalitarian dictatorships from South America did the same thing. People just all of a sudden go missing. Taken from airports, taken from bus stations, taken from public places of commerce. And then just, wow, disappear. It's kind of creepy, isn't it? All right, I'll leave uh, footage of that mother too. I think Rebel Media did a story about that. But uh, this week has been a real shit show when it comes to policies, politics, and uh, decent fucking leadership, ladies and gentlemen. Really, like it's just getting, it, it's getting fucking ridiculous, honestly. And a special mention out there to Adam Danny Mose, Jilly Davis. Thank you for the uh, audio work you guys have done for me. I've had trouble loading it, so don't take it personally. I'll work out the tweaks later. But thank you very much for that, too. And a special thank you out there to everybody who uh, followed my live stream there last Thursday where I sat and had a good chat with Adam Danny Mose. Great Canadian folks, please check out his work. You can find his links on YouTube at uh, mazay.ca. I'll leave uh, uh, links to his podcast as well, you know, which I'm a panel member too. So you can see Adam and his panel and myself uh, tomorrow night, 4 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, where we basically have a roundtable discussion on the week's events and policies and social dilemmas as we see it. So please tune into that. And as an added feature, too, instead of me doing my live stream every two weeks, uh, which I usually have done before, I'm changing the format. Basically, I'm going to call it the Krusty Canuck Thursday Fastball, where I'll just have a guest on, we'll sit and have a good talk, and then we'll take questions from the audience, just like my other live streams. And if you want to donate, feel free to donate, too. Use the Super Chat stickers and all that good stuff. This Thursday on the 11th, I'll be having Bennett Hunter, a Canadian libertarian, a very, very outspoken Canuck from the East, who speaks his mind, who grew up pretty hard, but pretty humbled, and just an all-around decent guy. So please tune into that, too, if you can. That'll be Thursday on uh, Facebook and YouTube, respectively. So carrying on again with more of the contract secrets and the slap and tickles brought to you by the Canadian government. But first, here's a word from my sponsors. In October of 2015, Lindsay Robbins, like many of her fellow Canadians, was struggling with the turmoil of mental illness. The ups and downs of what she was going through was shaping her realities, and she longed for structure. As luck would have it, that structure presented itself to her in the form of gardening. And through gardening, Lindsay had an awakening that led her to create produce for heroes. Lindsay realized that our veterans were going through their own mental struggles, and through her own experience, she realized the power of community. By desiring to help the way that she had been helped, she has created a program that provides relief to veterans. Her food program, which aims to provide veterans and their families relief from the stresses of food insecurity and help alleviate the cost of living for those that have sacrificed so much for their country. Whether it's through directly contacting Produce for Heroes or through a friend's referral, all veterans and their families living in Canada are welcome. By shining a light on the struggle of veterans and their families, Lindsay is hoping to get her fellow Canadians to hop on board and support Produce for Heroes and our great veterans. If you or a veteran you know needs help, ProduceforHeroes.com is a great place to start. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. This is Brian Boucher, the new CEO of Canad Gold Corp. We have gold at 99% purity with discounts ranging from $100 up to $200 off the ounce. This is the right place to buy, from 2 gram cards to 400 ounce bricks. We have any quantity of gold you are looking for. We also sell by the ton, not like your ex-wife. Visit us today at canadgold.com, C-A-N-U-N-D, gold.com. And yes, you can find Brian and Scott at canadgold.com and talk to Lindsay via Produce for Heroes. Uh, links will be in the description under heading Sponsors. Yes, carrying on, ladies and gentlemen, with more contract secrets. So what gets me is that you have a procurement board in this country that's supposed to look after things, i.e. firefighting equipment for the ministries, um, 
items of uh, particular interest, i.e. boats for fisheries and oceans, Navy procurement, Air Force procurement, Army procurement, and all that good stuff that's supposed to keep this country running. And yet out of a board of roughly maybe 30 or 40 people, uh, as far as I know, okay, they can't fucking decide what to do and to get done. Now, there's probably some other red tape regulation out there that has thwarted uh, said procurement because since the Liberal government has got in in 2015, they have done nothing but regulate what goes into our ground, what goes into our mouths, what goes into our faces, what we watch in fucking television. So it's basically turning into a great big socialized, one big happy family for the greater good. What a fucking joke. So to all these ministers out there that have something to hide, you better bring it to surface. Okay? Because I know personally there's a lot of Canadians, especially in the western side of this great nation, okay, are getting really, really fed up with the fucking lies and the feeble attempts to tell us the truth, okay? I'd like to remind these individuals, too, that uh, some of you procurement board aficionados are making anywhere from $80,000 to $150,000 a year to, quote-unquote, pure care things, and that the minister is making anywhere from $195,000 a year to $240,000 a year because she or he or whatever they want to be addressed as is the minister of said fucking group. Now... What is the problem? If these vaccines are so viable and they work, why is there such a dog fuck? Why is there such a dichotomy when it comes to getting this to Canadians that need it? They made such a big deal there about a month ago when the first individual got her shot on national television. Great. Bring out the fanfare for the common man. Okay. What kind of fanfare are you producing right now when it comes to excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse? Now, I don't know about you, but if I had an employer and I kept giving her, him or her excuses every fucking time I was late or I wasn't producing something or digging the hole right or making sure the machinery was working, I'd get my ass fucking fired. Honestly. And yet these individuals who have to wait every four years to do the whole turnaround, i.e. our election process and our parliamentary process, get to sit there and sit pretty, collect a good fucking paycheck, while people again are going without. Okay? Now, I've dwelled on this before numerous fucking times uh, in every of my episodes when it comes to safety, procurement, uh, security, sanity, and freedom. Okay? Now, when it comes to these so-called polls you keep advertising, whether it's Nanos or the Gallup polls or whatever fucking poll company out there is doing something, I like to ask these people, where do you get this information from? Is it speculation? Do you actually walk out in the street and talk to people one-on-one with a clipboard and ask these people yay or nay on whatever subject? Or you just take it out of your fucking ass and off the cuff, right? I'll leave a story from the Western Standard Online in regards to polls and when it comes to uh, COVID camps and detentions, right? And what gets me is Potato Sock Puppet, our beloved, you know, Prime Minister Sock Boy himself, sitting there saying, well, you know, if uh, you come internationally, then we're going to have to lock you up for three or four days at your expense and uh, feed you mediocre food and lock you in a hotel room just to make sure you're okay. Now, there's a story I will add here from an individual who took some pilot training in the United States and the way he was treated. And he was tested prior to entering the States and prior to leaving the States, yet he was treated like a goddamn dog and put in a fucking hotel, right? All in the name of safety, right? Makes you think, doesn't it? Okay. And part of my swearing, ladies and gentlemen, that's part of my brand and that's part of what I do in this fucking show. I will drop an F-bomb, a C-bomb, a twat bomb because of the goddamn stinking lazy leadership that we have here, okay? We have an issue here. And I personally think our government has handled it well. They haven't done well enough, right? And that's all branches of government too, not just the conservatives versus the liberals or liberals versus the NDP or the bloc versus the greens or vice versa or one big fucking happy. It's like a retarded fucking high school clique, right? Everyone who went to high school and felt intimidated by this group of people or that group of people or this social fucking setting or that social setting, it's turning into a ridiculous high school fucking trilogy, Okay, you got the cool kids calling the shots here, and there's nothing cool about them. Okay, these are individuals that have been handed things all their fucking natural life, and have really no concept of reality and what the real world's going to do. They fail to realize that the more and more they screw around, the more and more it's going to bite them in the fucking ass, and they forget that. They forget who they work for. I'll say again, I'm not denying the fact that this 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 pandemic isn't real. I know it's real. Okay. 
I've actually had a couple of emails recently from people that say they've got it. And it's not as bad as some people say. But they also swore to me too, and I, they made me promise not to give them their names, and rightfully so. we got to protect our privacy too when it comes to these uh, issues, right? Because too much canceling is going on out there, too much uh, witch hunting, too many Carls and Karens tattling on people. And yet some of these people, these politicians and administrators alike, are encouraging people still to rat out your fucking neighbor. Dude, that doesn't sound fascist at all, right? Doesn't sound like a proletariat? No. Doesn't sound like a communist manifesto, nor a fascist regime. No, of course not. Please, you see something uh, you know, that's suspicious. Please give us a call at 1-800-SACRIFICE-YOUR-SANITY.COM. Yeah. I know I just threw a .com in there and a phone number, but I think it gets my drift. <laughs> How's my German? What do you think? Yes? Jawohl? Does it sound effective? And I'm not trying to offend anybody out there with uh, who is a German descent or a German listener. But I'm just trying to act like the stereotypical Nazi who would uh, round people up all in the name of the party's ideology. Kind of like how the ideology is going on now with our Liberal Party. And some conservatives, too, who, who fail to stand up and take a bite out of this thing we call democracy and learn to enjoy it to the best of our abilities. Now, I've had talks with people who have disagreed with me. That's fine. I've had people who agree with me. I've actually had some sunny emails from some people who would sit there and, and type to me, who do you think you are saying such bad things? What's bad about wanting freedom to choose? What's bad about having shops open? What's bad about being able to go outside and play with your kids, your nieces, your nephews, or hold the hand of a loved one? What's wrong with going shopping together and holding your wife's hand? What's wrong with going to a, a, a mom and pop shop and picking up some, some cool kit? Hmm? What's wrong with filling up your car? What's wrong with going to your job? What's wrong with having a job, right? Pierre Polyev did a good statement the other day, and I'll leave a link to, uh, to what he said there too in regards to the only job that should be missing is Justin's job. And it was quite... Quite prophetic if, if, when you think about it. Now, I got a lot of respect for Pierre Pelliev, not just because uh, he has conservative values or what have you, but he's, he's smart, he's intelligent, he's a family man, and he, he's taken a stand. And I, I would like to see uh, more conservatives, too. I'd like to see more of these so-called leaders step up and say things. I'd like to see more libertarians get up and say things, too. You know, like my next guest for uh, next week, Ben and Hunter. But I also like to see more of these elected officials take a stand of these ridiculous procedures and to really fight for what's right. You know? Simple principle, peace, security, and freedom. I think we've all earned it one or the other. I know I have. My brothers and sisters have in the service. And serving members to this day deserve it. Our elderly deserves it. You know? The boomers, the Gen Xers, the Gen Zs, and yes, even the millennials too. Peace, security, and freedom. To go, go out and touch and taste and feel and be fucking alive and to enjoy the simple things in life. And to be able to have the ability to work, to get better things in life, to have that better house, to have that better car, that better truck, to have a better education, to have a better insight on what's going on around us without all this stifling censorship talk and canceling crap. And half-assed leaders who think they know everything just because they have a law fucking degree. If they understood the law, then they'd be doing something to protect it. Rather than change it to suit their fucking favor. Right? But then what do I know? I'm just some crusty Canuck, right? Yeah. Well, needless to say, there's more of me coming out of the woodwork. More of us coming out of the woodwork, too. A lot of crusty Canucks out there standing up and speaking their effing minds. And rightfully so. I've been in situations where we've had to earn it well beyond just writing an essay or writing a poem or trying to do a half-assed poll, earning it with dedication and sacrifice, not knowing if you're going to live the next day because of the situation you're in. My father uh, is a retired firefighter, and he would tell me stories of some of the situations he was in. And I remember the look in his face one day. We were sitting around at the cottage having a couple of drinks. Now, we weren't drunk or anything. It just, you know, a nice little buzz going on. But uh, it was a nice day. A nice hot day. Lake was nice. 
weather was nice. It was just peaceful. I told him a war story, and then he told me a story about how he saved a little kid. And uh, I'm not going to go into graphic details, ladies and gentlemen, but that, uh, that showed me a side of my father I, I, I never saw. And uh, that was scary, but it just goes to prove how human we still are and how flawed we are and how vulnerable we can be. And there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable sometimes, but we got to understand that there's more to sacrifice than just working 12 hours out of the day or having to work 16 hours of the day or having to give an extra $25 to a loved one to help them keep the lights on. There's more to that. And that moment when my father told me that story, that reminded me about sacrifices that people make for each other whether it be strangers, whether it be loved ones, whether it be doctor to patient, nurse to patient, cop to so-called assailant or victim or victim of a, a crime or a situation. But the humanity is still there, ladies and gentlemen. It's just we got to swim through this shit because of so-called appointed officials and know-it-alls telling us a lie to further their agenda. Whether it be the Great Reset, whether it be the conspiracy theories that the government denies, even though the COVID camps and the hotels are out kicking alive and well, even though four months ago, uh, Mr. Justin Trudeau, Mr. fucking know-it-all, Peter Pan Sockboy himself, uh, said it wasn't a reality. Oh, it's just a conspiracy. And yet, this past week, he's been on television talking about more lockdowns and talking about purple people hotels after international flights. And yet, Rocks and Road's still rocking and rolling. You know, there's still people walking across and we're Oxen Road doing their thing. And yet Canadian citizens are being locked up. And yet there's no stagnation. There's no quarantine issues when it comes to temporary foreign workers. So which is it? Right? It's not racist to speculate that, ladies and gentlemen. It's not sexist or bigoted to say that. Why are a few people different than a few other people? Right? If we're all in this together... Why aren't they promoting the togetherness to, to find a solution to this problem? I know you tell me, crustybcanuck67 at gmail.com. You can also reach me at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and please pay attention to my community page on YouTube and Facebook for updates on new content not coming your way. And if you like what you hear and see, please click like and subscribe. And do not forget to click that little notification bell on the YouTube page there to remind you when new content is up and ready for your listening pleasure. Tell me, folks, what do you think? Honestly. Right? This is just, it's, we, we try to find light in the end of the tunnel and we try to be optimistic to a point, but it seems like every other day now we're getting a new story about uh, more casualties, more deaths. You know? Right? Whatever it's going on in the States or going on here in Canada, we're, we're not being told the truth again. Okay? We still have to cancel people because someone said a bad word. We still have to end this because, oh, someone's offended. It's funny, down in the States right now, too, you can't pray and say amen because somebody thought that was goddamn a microaggression. Yeah, you have to say amen and ah women. Like, what? What is that? I'm not a Christian myself, ladies and gentlemen. I don't practice any kind of faith. But when you hear that kind of ridiculous bullshit, you, do, you just go, what the TF? Like, what is that? Right? The same mentality changed our national anthem too. So we can't say in all thy sons command anymore. We have to say, in all of us we command. You know? What is that? All about inclusivity again? Politics? Changing a song? To suit a handful of fucking whiny bitches? Whether they stand to pee or not? Oh, shake my effing head. What the hell's going on? And again, more of these contract secrets. You know? More of these secrets, more slap and tickles just to uh, appease to the masses. And for what? Right? I don't know what to think. Other than we keep persevering, we keep criticizing, keep the dialogue going on, keep our spirits alive the best of our ability. Get out and demand answers again. Now, I'm still waiting for a call from my uh, local MP. I gave him a call twice there last week, too, uh, just before my last episode, and even yesterday, too. And I didn't get a call back. 
I called him in regards to what uh, Stephen Gobert wants to do with uh, regulating the media in our country, right? And regardless of how you dress up, ladies and gentlemen, you take a pile of crap, put it between two pieces of bread, doesn't matter if you put peanut butter or jam on it, or lettuce and tomato or mayo, maybe throw in a, a strip of bacon if we're lucky, it's still a shit sandwich, no matter how you dress it up. And these people in Ottawa keep offering us shit sandwiches. So let's get rid of the shit sandwich and start making our, our own BLTs. Right? Let's start making the flavor count again. Let's start making the reality count again. Okay? And I encourage all my listeners out there to, to call your MPs and MLAs respectively. Let them know what's on your mind. Send them a dozen emails. Send them a dozen phone calls. Let them know you are not happy. And if you are happy the way things are, fine. Be content with that. I'm not going to tell you what to think. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But you go to your job and they close the doors because of COVID. You go to a shop you like to frequent uh, because of convenience and they close down because of COVID. Then what? Keep boxing us in. And then what? I hate to say it. Like I said in my live stream there with Adam. I, I think violence is coming, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think something is going to happen. I think something terrible is going to happen. And I'm not going to become a, a doomsday believer or doomsayer here. You know, I'm not trying to bring anybody down. But when we look at our own statistics and what we see on every national news broadcast and independent broadcast too, there's a lot of dissent going around. And it's not just because of uh, of racism and bigotry. It's because of blatant fucking ignorance. It's because of people that we put in charge who really don't want to do the job. They're going to collect their paycheck, look after the ideologues, look after their special interests, and that's it. Right? Look after their image and their position in government and screw the rest. Right? And I can also say throughout my history, this is probably the only government term that I really, really dislike. You know, I had my problems with Marooney when I was younger. Had my problems with Cretchen <coughs> and Paul Martin. And even Stephen Harper did some stupid shit. But we weren't in fucking ridiculous debt. Right? And that guy pulled us out through a recession. So people were still working. People still had their jobs. People were still being functional and being allowed to thrive and flourish. But because of these restrictions now and because of the anti-oil sentiment and anti-Canada sentiment. There's more regulations, more red tape, more businesses going under. And of course, to top it all off, the shitheads want to throw another tax at us. So we got two carbon taxes, a higher income tax bracket, and people are losing hope. And what's this government doing about it? Oh, we can't decide to uh, get a vaccine and we can't really talk about it because it might jeopardize a contract. And yet, you're jeopardizing the lives and the sanctity and the safety and the fucking sanity of the people you represent. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, if this, if this episode is all doom and gloom, but I'm angry. And I know a lot of Canes that are angry, too. Like I say again, what, what say you? CrustyBCanuck67 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Gab, Telegram. And signal. Please check it out. Contact me there. I'll even close my writing address in the description too. So you want to send me a card or send me a nice thought or send me some swagger or some products you'd like me to endorse or sponsor, please let me know. I'll leave that in the description as well too. And if you feel like donating to my cause, just go to crustyconnect.ca. Links will be in the website where you can donate too. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I have been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 6th of February. 2021. Let's demand, if they're going to put poll information up there, let's find these polls. Let's start demanding answers. Let's start standing up for Canada. All colors, all creeds, all genders, all identities. We are in this together, but we're in this together to win the good fight and to fight the bullshit and to put these people accountable. No more of this, well, it's not my fault, it's their fault. Bullshit. We know who's in charge. So it's time they step up to the fucking plate. Or we will. Anyhow, folks, like I said, I'm a crusty Canuck. Look after your friends and your loved ones. Do what you can. Help each other out. Help out a neighbor. A few extra bucks. Gasoline. Groceries. Help shovel some snow. And especially people in my area, too. Make sure you bundle up. 
Minus 35 Celsius is not pretty, especially with the wind chill. So keep that in mind. And like I say, do what you can for your friends and loved ones. And remember, humanity and merit wins the day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here.